May 7th is Australia's National Dinosaur Day, and our video today is sponsored by the world's longest running dinosaur magazine, the Prehistoric Times, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Each issue contains numerous articles about paleontologists, paleo artists, prehistoric collectibles, recent releases for books and toys, and always covers two different prehistoric species or groups. This article appeared in issue 108 in 2014. The following review about this issue was published by England's Everything Dinosaur blog. The two prehistoric animals featured in this issue are Austral Venator and the enormous ancient ape Gigantopithecus. Phil Hall goes over the finer details of these very diverse members of the fossil record, and there are lots of amazing readers' artworks included too. A big opposable thumbs up to Phil, especially for his highly informative and well-written article on Gigantopithecus. Okay, we're not covering Gigantopithecus today, not Australian, but you should read my article. That critter's history is amazing. Now before we begin I would like to point out this article is nearly 10 years old meaning new finds since may have changed some of the suggestions or even the science behind many of these fossils, because that's what science does. It grows, changes, and I dare say evolves as new information, new science, new technology, or even new thinking expands what we once knew. That is why evolution is called a theory. It's constantly being updated and expanded, something a fact cannot do. I will also try and link any article or website below. Terror Down Under, the tale of Australia's theropods. Though only just over two centuries old, the nation known as Australia has a long and bizarre history in paleontology. One that involves names like Napoleon, Jefferson, Darwin, Huxley, and most importantly, Richard Owen. Normally, when it comes to dinosaurs, it's the herbivores that are common in the fossil record, and the meat eaters, or theropods, that are rare. And just like in so many other areas, Australia doesn't do things like the rest of the world. A general rule of thumb is, you need 10 to 20 herbivores for each carnivore, otherwise an ecosystem will crash. A ratio seemingly echoed in the fossil record. This idea is controversial, and in truth far more complicated to work out than just counting fossils as these ratios can vary between warm and cold-blooded creatures, not to mention the size of the predators and the prey. Well, though not quite 50-50, the dinosaur record in Australia seems to be heavily weighted towards theropods. The first dinosaur fossil discovered in Australia, and very possibly the Southern Hemisphere, was by a geologist, William Hamilton Ferguson, in 1903, while he was out looking for new sources of coal along the Victorian coast. What he found was a fossil today known as the Cape Patterson Claw, and for why May 7th is Australia's National Dinosaur Day and its association with this fossil, you can see our earlier clip on the link that should be on your screen now. 70 years later, another theropod fossil was unearthed near the original location, this time a partial ankle bone. This would be described as the infamous Polar Allosaurus that many of us may remember from Walking with Dinosaurs from the BBC. Even early on the idea of comparing and aligning Australian dinosaurs with Northern Hemisphere species grated some scientists. It was clear the modern southern continents had far more in common with each other than they did with those in the north. South America and Australia share marsupials, Australia and South Africa have large numbers of flowering bushes like the Banksia, while Australian and Indian rainforests share numerous genres. So why would the fossil record be any different? Well in fact it turns out Australia's theropods are even weirder and more familiar than anyone could have ever guessed. Along the Victorian coastline numerous fossils have been found, especially around Dinosaur Cove or Inverloch, a region only really accessible during low tide. Some 1,500 fossils would be found during the years by tunnelling into the cliff face there, and dozens of these belong to mysterious theropods. These would be described to various carnival groups such as the Ornithomimids, or Ostrich Mimics, or Allosaurus, even Megalosaurus. I should point out, at the start of the 20th century, most new theropods found outside the US were eventually attached to this group, even some Oviraptors. Further theropod remains were later found in the opal fields of New South Wales and South Australia. Kakaroo, Rapator, and the wonderfully named Osraptor Subutai, named after the archer thief from the Conan the Barbarian movie. There were also dinosaur trackways discovered in Queensland, New South Wales, and Western Australia. However, up until this point, no large theropod fossils had been found. 
but some of these footprints were from extremely large carnivores. And though it's frowned on to name any species from inadequate remains, after years of finding nothing but broken bones, frustrated Australian paleontologists began naming their discoveries. Almost all of the above species were named from little more than a single bone, and with so many tantalising footprints, they also named the creatures they believed had made these as well. Recently, some of the largest of these, Tyrannosauropus, or Tyrannosaur foot, have been reinterpreted as belonging to that iconic Australian dinosaur, the herbivore Matabarasaurus. But there are still a few that give us an idea what was hunting here during the Mesozoic. And it would seem the reinterpretations don't end there. A paper released in 2012 by Benson, Rich, Vickers Rich and Hall called Theropod Fauna from Southern Australia indicates high polar diversity and climate driven dinosaur provinciality has revised many Australian fossils with some truly stunning results. The fossil catalogued NMV P22 1081 is a single juvenile vertebra that has been assigned to the Spinosaurids thanks to features it shares with Baryonyx. NMV P186302, another vertebra, seems to belong to either a small oviraptor or even a truodont. NMV P10058 is the Patterson claw, now considered an ornithiomimiosaur or alvarosaurid. Truth is, there just isn't enough detail on that claw to really tell what it is. NMV P216672, yet another vertebra, has clear Maniraptorian characteristics and was not some oviraptor but a true dromaeosaur. The real surprise is NMV P186303 the single leg bone that was thought to belong to an ornithomimid called Tomimus. In this new paper, Tomimus has been reclassified as, of all things, a Tyrannosauroid. It joins a partial pubis from Dinosaur Cove, NMV P186069, which has also been classified as a basal or very early Tyrannosaur. Certainly many doubt this could be true but it would seem the Australian fossil record is starting to prove that the continent was home to many more iconic dinosaur species. Serendipteroceratops sarthasi clarkii, or NMV P186385, is an Australian dinosaur recognised by a single arm bone, one that is remarkably similar to a very early ceratopsian called Leptoceratops. The problem is, the Australian fossil is far older than any other specimen. More recently, it's been argued this bone is similar to a lot of basal herbivorous dinosaurs, including Australia's own ankylosaur, Minmi, so it's likely not a ceratopsian at all. However, this new theropod paper mentions a counter-argument defending the original assignment is currently in preparation, means the world's most famous dinosaurs, Triceratops and T-Rex, may have had their origins down under. So far, all Australian theropods were only known from single or very fragmentary remains. This all changed in 2006 with Austral Venator Wintonensis, or AODL604. This large theropod was found on a cattle station in Queensland, and though still fragmentary, for the first time an Australian theropod has been found with numerous bones. Nicknamed Banjo, after Banjo Patterson, author of Waltzing Matilda, as the fossils were found in an old billabong, this theropod would have been 6 metres long, 2 metres tall, and over 500 kilos in weight. This was extremely lightweight for a large carnivorous dinosaur, leading to Banjo being dubbed the cheetah of the Cretaceous. The similarity between it and the polar allosaur ankle bone has also redefined this fossil as likely belonging to Austral Venator, or another close relative, as these fossils are also similar to Japan's Fuchioraptor, South America's Megaraptor, and more importantly, to the Isle of Wight's Neovenator. For those unaware, the Isle of Wight sits off England and is home to Neovenator, the early Tyrannosauroid Eotyrannus, and the Spinosaurid Baryonyx. All three now seem to have representatives in Australia, suggesting the ancestors of these animals were widespread throughout the Jurassic, only to become isolated during the Cretaceous as the world's continents drifted apart. Those these conclusions are likely only temporary until more evidence or a stronger theory is presented, what the Australian theropods tell us is the simple picture we once had for carnivorous dinosaur evolution is far more complicated than previously thought. Because now, T-Rex could be an Aussie. So there you go, a quick review of Australia's known carnivorous dinosaurs, the theropods. 
so please put in your calendar for the upcoming National Fossil Day on June 26th. And you can see why that date was chosen on this link here. We have a great story to tell you on that date, and if you are a dinosaur fan, or know someone who is, why not subscribe to the Prehistoric Times magazine? There's nothing better than getting that big envelope in the mail and pulling out a magazine full of the stuff you love. And that's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed that. As I said, all links below, and enjoy your National Dinosaur Day.